close sports balls, NFL free agency gave us everything we wanted in more. Trista Crick details the beauty, chaos, winners and losers from it all. USA Today let Charles Haley ponder the baffling case of David Irving, whose defining mark from a four-year, multiple drug suspension interrupted NFL career was fittingly represented with the way he went out, smoking a blunt as he announced his retirement during a live feed on Instagram. This dude was just a natural at it, Haley, the Hall of Fame pass rusher, told USA Today Sports, referring to the talented yet oft-absent former Dallas Cowboys defensive tackle. But he was overweight and everything else. He just didn't want to play. He gets a high ankle sprain and didn't come to work. They couldn't find his ass for three weeks. Yes he was in the house, smoking weed, Irving, 25, performed his stunning social media episode earlier this month, days after the NFL issued an indefinite suspension. Last week, he revealed to USA Today Sports that he has struck a deal with a California-based company that produces beverages containing cannabidiol CBD, and elaborated on some of the salient points he expressed on Instagram in contending that the NFL needs to change its drug policy because of the purported medical benefits of marijuana. He also indicated that he has been diagnosed with several medical conditions, including manic depression, post-traumatic stress disorder and bipolar disorder, that he attributes to concussions suffered while playing in the NFL. Everybody wants to love him because he's articulating some good points, Haley said. But it's like, you signed up for this. Nobody twisted your arm. You knew the NFL rules when you signed up. Now you're using it as an excuse, so you can have a platform, it's a delicate matter, sad on levels that extend far beyond what an immensely talented player offered, on the field. Many of us may never relate to challenges that someone encounters with substance abuse, addictions or mental illnesses. Irving's situation includes full custody of his seven-year-old daughter. Yet Haley, who maintains ties with his two former teams, the Cowboys and 49ers, has a deeper perspective than most. Throughout his career, he battled bipolar disorder, for which he was treated with medication and counseling, and was involved in a series of explosive encounters that underscored his issues. His compassion for Irving, though, has a limit. Thank you. You're almost signed up for sports. Keep an eye out for an email to confirm your newsletter registration. More newsletters, I hate putting a brother down, said Haley, who was once thrown out of Bill Walsh's office for stomping on teammate Roger Craig in practice, but I'm not going to lay down and allow somebody to say, Uncle, you need counseling, reflecting this week on his experiences that were far different from what we know of Irving's situation, Haley insists his love of the game and the structure of the NFL environment allowed him to function effectively, as only Tom Brady has won more Super Bowls as a player. But he admits, he didn't embrace counseling until he had finished his 12-year NFL career, it's not one-size-fits-all, Haley added of counseling efforts. I didn't want to talk to no white man. Or a white woman. I wanted a, black woman, like my mom, Haley shared thoughts, he said, with Irving and Randy Gregory, the Cowboys' defensive end currently suspended again under the league's substance abuse policy. And if you know Haley, there's no way the chats were sugar-coated. But apparently his straight talk was hardly a game-changer. Free agency winners, losers, Browns rise as Giants sink without Odell Beckham Jr. In Irving's case, the frustration with the Cowboys was wrapped with the sense that the extremely talented player wasn't fully committed to efforts of support that extended beyond formal programs and included the typical hands-on involvement from team owner Jerry Jones. While praising Jones, Irving told USA Today Sports that Cowboys coach Jason Garrett said, I should just quit, smoke all the weed I want. Garrett did not respond to a request from USA Today Sports for comment. Now Irving is trying to position himself as a change advocate. Like it or not, he added a layer to debate about how the next NFL drug policy will be crafted, ostensibly in the league's next labor deal following the 2020 season. Some of Irving's points, such as the notion that marijuana can be a better alternative for treating some injuries and pain than opioids that he maintains are regularly prescribed by NFL doctors, may have merit when considering that more than 30 states now allow for legalized medicinal marijuana to treat various conditions. 
that's one of the principal arguments for relaxing the league's drug policy, perhaps even to the extent that it isn't test for marijuana at all. The NFL's stance, often uttered by Commissioner Roger Goodell, is that the league will allow science to guide its view on the medical benefits of marijuana, which at this point as viewed by the league is still inconclusive. The debate in the context of Irving. Worthy cause. Wrong person to carry the banner. Marvin Washington, the former NFL defensive lineman turned cannabis activist, wonders whether Irving damaged his credibility with the poor optics of the Instagram video, if it's medicine, present it as medicine, Washington told USA Today Sports. When you do that, you feed into the stereotype that it's not medicine, it's just getting high. Nonetheless, Washington, vice president of development for Isodial, a Vancouver-based pharmaceutical company with several products containing CBD, said he would support Irving's advocacy. He's just puzzled by the actions that feed the perception that Irving, whose one-year contract in 2018 was worth $2.9 million, is willing to blow the opportunity to earn millions of dollars so that he can smoke weed unencumbered. Then again, Irving's actions also might just play and underscore the severity of other issues. It takes big courage to do what he did, said Washington, who played 11 NFL seasons with four teams and won a Super Bowl ring with the Broncos. If he's true to himself, there's no amount of money that would be enough for him to continue to play, surely, it's not as simple as contending that a player must continue to play for the money if his heart isn't in it, even after playing so many years without collecting a dime before reaching the NFL. Given the long-term health risks associated with football, personal considerations are certainly valid. Yet, if smoking marijuana was essential to Irving's case, that still could have been achieved inside the NFL's policy. The window to test players who have never tested positive for the drug opens on April 20th while players who tested positive can graduate out of the random testing program by staying clean for two years, he has a legitimate point, Washington said of Irving. But he has to understand that the NFL isn't there yet. He could have stayed on the inside as an advocate, Washington estimates that 70% of NFL players use marijuana, but he intimates that most never enter the drug program because they are clean during the testing window. He expects that ultimately, the policy will be a moot point, but as it stands now, the NFL's policy is humiliating, he said. It's out of step with the times, that sounds a lot like Irving's key points. But rather than argue against the policy as an active player with loads of unfulfilled potential, Irving now can make his case while pitching products for ghost beverage. Maybe that's a fitting encore for a man who went ghost on the Cowboys. Follow Jarrett Bell on Twitter at Jarrett Bell.